Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to the show. Today, I am super excited to dive into today's conversation with Aspen of Aspen Dawn Photo. She's a storytelling family maternity. She's a storytelling family maternity and motherhood photographer in Bakersfield, California, a couple hours north of LA. She's had Aspen Dawn Photo for five years now and has been doing professional photography for just over 10 years. She's also a mama of two daughters and a wife to an amazing husband. Growing up, she knew that her creative brain would not allow her to have a nine to five desk job and being a full-time photographer has definitely fulfilled her creativity. I swear I've been following her forever on social media and I'm so excited to have her join me today. So welcome Aspen. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I'm just oh, so excited <laughs> bouncing off the walls Aww. in my brain. <laughs> I love it. Well, before we were riffing a little bit before we hit record and we were just laughing because I had so many tabs open and we were laughing because also like my brain, I'm always has so many tabs open and we were just laughing because I mean, isn't, isn't that the case? We always have just so many things on the go, so many tabs open, so many ideas, so many things that we're working on. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't even like stop to breathe sometimes because I just have all of the ideas. I want to do all of the things yeah. all at once, Yes, but my body won't allow me to. And I guess my brain won't either because I can't do that, <laughs> but I still want to. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, I, I hope that counts for something. I, I, I hope that pushes me in some direction. I don't know though. I don't know if it's counterproductive. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, what's funny is I recently got, I recently joined somehow like three different reclamation dress groups. And I'm getting yeah. like targeted so heavily with all of these. Rec I'm like, oh gosh, Lisa, like, put the credit card away. Put the credit <laughs> card away. Stop. Because <laughs> those are all the time. Yesterday. I'm like, I'm like, ooh, right. You know, and they're all so pretty. She's she's amazing. Just I such know. an amazing human and yeah. designer. And I can't help but like, I have like, I don't even know, like four hanging up right now that I'm yeah. about to take to my sessions tonight. <laughs> Right? I know. <laughs> Just can't get enough of her. I love it. Well, actually, I don't know if you know this about Trista. So we're talking about Trista Smith, who's been a guest on the show, and she's the owner of Reclamation. And she actually lives in Victoria, BC, which is about three and a half hours away from me. But she actually went to school with my husband. And they went to what? high school together. Yes. So, yeah, she knows my hubby. She actually grew up in the town that I'm from. Oh, my and gosh. when her sister-in-law was pregnant, she contacted me and said, hey, Lisa, will you do um, her photos. And so she actually came up, we got to hang out. She was there for the entire shoot and we had just a blast getting to know each other. We like shot in a snowstorm and it was just fun and awesome. Um, yeah. how magical. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, isn't that fun? Yeah. That's so, the coolest thing ever. Yeah. So I adore Trista so much. <laughs> oh, I love it. How can you not? She's right? just, she's wonderful. I adore Good. her. <laughs> So I want to talk about you though, and I want to know about okay. your journey into photography, how it began, how you evolved into Aspen Dawn Photo, and how that sort of has evolved over the past decade. For sure. So it really, I think, started in high school. Like my love for photography started developing mm -hmm. really young. And what's funny is I just like made this realization pretty recently was how much I really loved telling people stories at that age. And not wanting anyone to look at my camera, not wanting anyone to <laughs> act like I was there. I just wanted to cap capture people as they were in the moment. And it would always just be my friends in the quad, like having lunch or whatever. But <laughs> for some reason, it was just such an interesting thing just to observe people. And being an introvert, that's just been like a natural thing for me anyway, is I love to just like watch people and just see how they are. And like humans are just such like wild creatures to me. So it's just so fun to just see how everyone is so individual and capture their personalities. And I kind of put the camera away for a little bit um, until my first daughter was born and she's 12 now. Uh, but at about nine months old, I realized how quickly time was moving and I didn't want to miss a second and I just picked up the camera again and started shooting and I haven't put it down since. Yeah. I have a very similar story. I started in, two, I picked up my camera in 2010 and my son oh, okay. is 14. He was the reason. And oh it's gosh. funny, I have a similar story, but I didn't realize because I, like, I graduated back in 1995. So I'm old. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, you look amazing. So <laughs> it shocked me. <laughs> yeah. 
I was, I would do the same thing, but with film, like it was like film cameras. And uh, were you digital? I was always digital. Yeah. 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 It was film camera back then. And so it's funny because I was like, I would do the same thing, but it was like, I wanted to set up scenes with people. And so I would do that with my high school friends. And so looking back at the albums, I do have all these scenes that I created. But that is so funny that that I didn't actually put two and two together that I would do that because my photography is very scene based. And I'm always setting up a scene with something. Yeah. What a trip. That's so cool. Yeah. So I was like, you just, I just figured something out there too. I love that's, that. Oh, how funny. That's just ingrained in us, I guess. Right? <laughs> what we want to so do. It just, it's just always in there. Just it really is. Until we, we let it flow. I love it. <laughs> so Bakersfield, California serves as your base. So how does the local culture, environment, influence your storytelling photography, particularly in capturing family maternity and motherhood moments? So Bakersfield's <laughs> an interesting place. It's... um. It's very like hometown feel, like small town vibe, but there's like, yeah. I don't know, like 800,000 people. So it's like, it's wow. relatively large, but yeah. it, it feels so small. I swear everyone knows everyone in some like weird, like two degrees of Kevin Bacon type way and super strange. Um, but I mean, the culture itself, it, it isn't really, it's very like country Western, which yeah. is not... <laughs> not me at all so it's kind of funny I feel kind of like a fish out of water here even though I grew up here for the most Mm -hmm. part um but I feel like just pulling different ideas and like kind of forcing myself to be creative in an environment that's not like there's no like super beautiful locations here it's all very city very um there's buildings everywhere there's always Mm -hmm. like new housing developments and having to really like push myself to be mm-hmm. creative and like I'll bring my clients to the the sketchiest looking places sometimes but it ends up photographing in such a different magical way it's just yeah. having to really like force myself to push my boundaries I think is really yeah <laughs> what what's I what I've had to do here yeah are you close to the ocean at all I'm not sorry I'm I'm Canadian and I'm yeah <laughs> geography so sure. California um yeah. are, is it is it fairly like inland or is it closer to the ocean so we're pretty inland, um, yeah. but we're like about two hours away from the ocean. So mm-hmm. it's not like a huge track or anything, which is yeah. why I like to shoot there in the summer when I have time to. Yeah. But on the regu- on a regular basis, I have to stay in town yeah. <laughs> due to my husband's schedule and just traveling two hours every time. I, I wish I could, but yeah. it's hard with being a mom. <laughs> is, the, is, the, is the landscape um, like more de- deserty? Gosh, I don't even know what to classify it as. Like we have like a lot of hills. It's yeah. it's a really like big like agricultural town too. So yeah. we have lots of fields and hills and um so and it's all like on the outskirts of town. So we have to like drive a little bit of a distance in order yeah. to get the type of look and feel that we want. Yeah. I love that. Cuz where I live, we live in the Canadian desert. So we actually have like tumbleweeds. Mm-hmm. We've got cactuses here. Oh, um, it looks that. very much like California. Oh, so, that's so yeah, cool. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. When I went to L.A., I was like, whoa, this, like, this kind of looks like home, actually. <laughs> like, I'm home. Right. <laughs> that's Weird. so funny. I didn't realize that Canada <laughs> had deserts. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I, I'm not very well-versed. No, it's all good. <laughs> like, geography. And for some reason, the system isn't programmed that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It's all good. <laughs> we have our strengths, right? <laughs> right. Now, well, back to photography. For sure. You know, I can just go on tangents forever. Sorry. Seriously. I'm the queen of tangents. Um, so family and motherhood and maternity photography are your specialities. So what inspired you to focus on these niches and what do you find the most fulfilling about capturing these significant life moments? Goodness. I mean, I feel like I've always just been drawn to different family dynamics, mm-hmm. like whether they're, you know, like blended families or, you know, really, really tiny families or huge families. It's just really interesting to watch like the different personalities in each group. And I just find motherhood to be so beautiful. I mean, yeah. I'm, I kind of have a little bit of a bias because I'm a mom myself, yeah. but being able to watch myself grow through this journey. Cause I, I, I was 20 when I had my first baby, yeah. I was young. Yeah. Um, and just how I've been able to watch myself grow while watching, you know, both of my my babies grow, mm-hmm. um, I think just like allowed me to draw so much inspiration for motherhood in general and maternity, especially just like the, I feel like it's almost like the calm before the storm yeah. and being able, like, that's such like a huge part of motherhood that you don't ever get back. I mean, yeah, 
I feel like I, I try to push people to get maternity pictures taken, even, yeah. even if I sound a little like annoying, I'm just like, but you're never going to get like this time back. Like you'll have, you know, more and more moments with your babies and it's amazing to capture all of those. But this time while they're just like right before their earth side, like you're not going to ever have mm -hmm. that back. So it's, and it's just such, such a beautiful thing to watch, you know, moms carry their babies, like, like little baby bumps. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> I know. It's funny. It's like, it's, it's I, often I hear it. It's a struggle for some women, especially when they see the picture perfect of a certain look of, and then they're like, I don't look like that. Do you yeah. run into that and with your clients and you're like, or they don't want a book because they're like, I don't look like maybe what everybody else looks, well, not everybody else, maybe what social media says I should look like. And how oh, do you sure. um, approach that with your clients? So as someone who has struggled with their own self-image, a lot of the mm -hmm. time I feel like that gives me the upper hand to relate to moms, especially. Yeah. And just reminding them like how, you know, how little time we have in the season of life we're in, even though sometimes you don't want to be on camera or you feel like you're too awkward or there's something going on like behind the scenes that you're just like, I don't know if I want to remember this. It's just like, it's still such a pivotal, like every little stage of life has its like pull on like the picture as a whole. Like you, you should want to capture even like the bad parts because it's, it's a part of your story and you're going to come out of this and you're going to look back and be like, wow, this is where I was then capture it again as you are now. And a lot of people seem to, um, <laughs> like, sorry, my brain just, <laughs> we've been editor. It's fine. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please edit me. <laughs> it's my, my ADHD likes, it's just like, okay, what, like, from one I know, subject. It's like, I'm, I just, I'm thinking about my grocery list now. I don't, I don't, yeah. I'm, right? like, it's like, just like, wait, I'm not talking do? about something, but I just was thinking about crab. Right? Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. It's just. <laughs> All the time, all the time. <laughs> I wish I had a little switch. Same. But just like, okay, you're in work mode. Like, get back to it. Lordy. Um, but yeah, as I was just, just I was ugh, as I was saying, <laughs> um, I think that I mean every season of life is beautiful that we go through and is worth capturing and showing to, you know, friends and family and just being able to watch your story unfold. It's every moment matters love that so much. So balancing motherhood with a thriving photography business can be really challenging. So how do you manage to find harmony between your personal and your professional life? <laughs> I don't want, I wish I had like the secret sauce for this, but I'm still trying to figure it out. Right. Um, I think every day is different. Honestly, yeah. I think that there are days where I can accomplish a lot with work and I'm just like, I'm on the computer, I'm hustling, I'm go, go, going. And then there's other days where I'm just like, wow, I got literally nothing done. And it's because, you know, like right now my daughter is in this phase where she's having a lot of like fears and anxieties. And it's just like, I have to attend to that and prioritize that rather than, I mean, even though work is of course a priority, my clients are a huge, huge priority. I also want to make sure my kids don't feel like work comes before them ever. Um, so I have to be careful with it because sometimes I will, <laughs> um, kind of back off from work and be like, oh, oh no, I have to get, you know, this and this and this done. But I've been, you know, trying to spend time with my kids and like make memories with them. <laughs> so it's, it's a really, really hard and tricky thing to balance. And I, I really don't even like that word balance because I don't think it exists. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> I think doesn't. it's a myth. It is. It's like, I'm really good at what I'm working on right now, but like, uh -huh. that's it. There's no balance. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's just like, you can only do so much. And I've been really trying this thing called giving myself grace <laughs> for the first time in my life. Yeah. And just being like, I, I can only do my best and my best is going to have to be enough. And there, cause there's nothing else I can do. Yeah. So there, there are times where I mess up with being a mom and I think that's, you know, everybody does. <laughs> yeah. And just realizing like your kids don't need a perfect parent. Like they need to be loved mm -hmm. and supported. And those are the most essential things. Like that's what I can give and offer to them all the time. And I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to like, you know, sometimes work a little too long because I have to like get caught up and they're going to be mad at me, but you yep. know, hopefully one day they'll look back and be like, well, my mom worked hard to give us what yeah. we had. So yeah, exactly. 
I remember yeah. when there was one time my, my little guy was maybe four and a half or five and I was asking him to do something. He's like, babe, need five more minutes, babe. <laughs> I, was like, oh. I was like, well, I know where that came from. Oh no. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was like, oh, he just threw that back at me. <laughs> yeah, I do say that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Kids are so funny. Oh, so funny. I mean, you're know funny because my son is 14 and I honestly... Like, I think I'm busier now with, a, like, a teenager than I was with a toddler. Oh, my goodness. Like, I really do. And I, like, he's an only child, but. Yeah. Whew, like, and I'm, and it's funny because I know, like, like, this time is so fleeting and it's going by so quickly that oh, I've, sure. like, I've, I've purposely taken a step back from my photography because this time is so important. I know that I can pick up my camera and I can restart a business at any time, but I can't get these years back. A hundred percent. So I'm purposely like on hold a little bit so I can be, I run him around all over the place on weekends. Like we are the house where all the friends come to. And Aww. I, you know, I, I really wanted to cultivate that because like it is, it's, everything is so temporary. And in the moment it can feel like, you know, this is forever and it's frustrating or you're frustrated. But when you realize like it is just a blink that it just kind of, you're just like, okay, well there is my priority. I, I figured it out. Right. I'm getting emotional. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> I know, I know. Like seriously, oh the gosh. things I can tell, like, and even like, you don't know, like, I, and for me, like, getting those images when you, you can still pick up your kids is so important because you don't know it's going to be the last time you ever pick up your child, right? And it's that break your heart. Uh, I know, it makes me cry. I'm sorry, you're trying to make you. me. Feel I don't. And just I don't. Oh. It breaks my heart. Like, and you just don't know, mm -hmm. and like, it's just going to be that last time, and. Yep. And like, and it's just like slowly or slowly pulling away from you and it just like kills you. I know. And I'm sure you're going yep. through that with you with 12 year old. Those are a little exactly. different than boys. And I keep hearing that like, he's going to come back and yeah. oh, that thumbs up there. <laughs> They're like, yeah, he's going to come back. <laughs> There's your confirmation. You're good. Right. <laughs> it's going to happen. Odd. But you know, like, it's just like raising children and running a business. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not. And so I don't know, whenever I hear like, oh, like I found the secret of balance. Well, I'm like, oh, I haven't either. And it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We haven't, we're all just muddling through and there's going to be so many different seasons that we're going through too. Right. For sure. yeah. yeah. I mean, no matter what, like everything is going to be different. Like, yeah. like even on a daily basis, like weekly basis, um, like season basis, like I'm, yeah so so busy right now but I know yeah. like once the heat picks up because it gets like in the 110s or so here yeah it's gonna be like dead so yeah. <laughs> just like okay that that's when I can settle down and that's when I can you know be a little more intentional do more with my kids and like mm -hmm. have like try to make more memories then yeah. as opposed to like right now and that's it's just it's always an ebb and flow and trying to yeah. get the <laughs> get the flow of it each time is so difficult yeah. and just trying to do your best. That's that's really all we can totally. do. What's I don't know if you, you guys have been affected as much, but the wildfires that we've been experiencing over the past few years mm, and having to yeah. work as a photographer around that has been like like whoa, like not even just like, you know, summer vacation for children, but like as a working photographer and you're trying to get out there, but it's not healthy for your clients. Right. And it's not healthy for us to be out there. And then it also doesn't look that great because we've got this bright orange light. Exactly. Like it's hard. Yeah. Right? Not to mention scary. It's just yeah, like, right? being a person. It's just yeah. messing up everything. Yeah. Like we got through the pandemic and now we're just like dealing with wildfire. <laughs> it's gracious. Oh, it's like, when will it end? Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. I don't know. We went dark here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like how deep are we going to go? Because I'm, I'm here for it. I will go, I will go to the equator. Like yeah. it's, I'm into it. <laughs> there's, there's smoke there too. <laughs> oh yeah. There is. Yeah, that's true. We got to stay away from that. Love it. Well, I'll find a happy place. Medium. So we talked a little bit about styling, but I want to touch a little bit more on styling because it is such an essential aspect of photography. So mm -hmm. can you maybe share some insights into your approach to styling for family maternity or motherhood shoots? Yeah, absolutely. So I highly, highly encourage my clients to let me style them. Um, and a lot of the time, I feel like as time has gone on, they've seen, especially on my Instagram feed, like what kind of 
you know, dresses I like to shoot, what kind of colors I like to shoot. And they trust me a little bit more, I think, you know, as time has gone on. Um, but I do uh, heavily encourage them um, before their session. I send out a, a lengthy email of like styling do's and don'ts. If they want to do it on their own, I want them to have all the tools available for them. Um, I do use Style and Select and absolutely love their service. Like that's absolutely brilliant. Um, and my clients love it too. They they have so much fun like piecing little, little you know, outfits together and just being like, you know, asking for a second opinion, which I love. Um, but I do have a client closet for women and mostly little girls. I do have some stuff for boys, but I feel like boys and men are so much easier to shop for locally <laughs> than girls and women are. And it's like you can't go to Target and get a reclamation gown. Like that's just not going to happen. <laughs> So um, having those on hand, is, I think, is really helpful, too, because a lot of the times moms or especially expecting moms, they'll um, they'll buy something and wear it once, you know, yeah. for their shoe. And then it's just like, oh, when am I ever going to wear this again? So I think that having the client closet is not necessary, but it's also just a nice mm -hmm. thing to have and offer to your clients and makes them feel really special and pampered. I love that. So your passion for mental health advocacy is evident. We, you had that in your intake form. So how do you prioritize your own mental well-being while managing the demands of motherhood and running your business? <laughs> it sounds like a mystery. And honestly, it kind of is. Um, I think it's just really been an ongoing journey. I have struggled with mental health or my mental health with depression and anxiety specifically. Yeah. Um, and I'm learning a little more about potentially having ADHD and OCD mm -hmm. that's come up in therapy and my psychiatrist has brought that up. So I just have a little, a little library of all the things I'm trying to, you know, battle and manage and keep under control. But, um, it's like, even earlier this year, I was struggling like so badly with depression that I didn't know, like if I was going to make it out and it was really scary, but I think that just really trying to like, focus on myself when I know that I need it yeah. has helped immensely. Um, because yeah, it's just, it's been really interesting to navigate because no like <laughs> battle with it is the same. I feel like, I feel like there are just every time it feels new and it feels yeah. just as, you know, scary and foreign as the last. So it's, it's really interesting, but I feel like since late February, I've been feeling so good and I got back on an antidepressant that I was on yeah. that has been, I swear, a dream, like a life, lifesaver. Um, yeah. And I have been doing Pilates almost yeah. every day, which I used to hate. Like I was just like, Pilates is the absolute worst. You'll never catch me doing it. No, I love it. <laughs> and then just walking a lot and... Um, I feel like physical fitness has been like a huge, huge help in, in that, but also just making time to do things that I want to do. And like, even if it's for five minutes or, you know, a few hours, like whatever the time span is every day, just adding in a little bit of something where I can tend to myself has been a game changer, even as hard as that is being a mom, because you feel like that's your identity. Kids just need you as mom and as nothing else. But the thing is, is if you're showing them that, they are everything and you are nothing. Like, how are they going to be as mothers? How are they going to be as parents? So whenever I heard that, it was really like a slap in the face and just like, okay, well, I do need to really prioritize myself so I can be my best version of myself for them. And then they can grow and be the best version of themselves for them too. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because we've had so many years of programming that motherhood, it means self-sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like I remember like watching my mom, like, I don't think I ever saw her have a bath or like wow. just take that time. Right. Yeah. Like, and so I always thought that love meant hard work or like mm -hmm. you just like you put everyone else's needs first. And so that was, that's been something that I've really had to deprogram and unlearn because it's like, you know, when they say like fill your cup, yep. but you're like, but my cup is full of holes. Right. So it's like every time I'm pouring something in, it's like yeah. completely leaking out for and it's sure. Like, so it never feels like it fills up. So you got to mm -hmm. figure out how to patch the holes in the cup yep. too, while you're trying to fill it up. Absolutely. So that's, been, that's been my journey. 
yeah, you're you're not alone. I know that there's <laughs> <laughs> there are so many moms that that are going through that. And I've right. I mean I've been through my fair share, but sometimes it's still well, like seeps back in and just like I have to actually take like an inward look and be like, okay, like why do I feel like this right now? Like have I done anything, you know, to fill my cup and to feel yeah. like I'm a human and a and a woman and not just mom or wife yeah. or photographer, business owner, whatever yeah. it might be. It's just like you have to tend to you, like you as yeah. you know your own person. So yeah. one thing, because I'm I swear I'm a I'm a reforming people pleaser and having <gasps> to like yeah. be com- get comfortable with the discomfort of maybe not making everybody happy. Right. That's a big one. Like, huge, huge. And like just uh-huh. sitting with that, like, you know what? Couldn't do, couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't exactly. say yes. Couldn't do your session. Like, and that's okay. Like, yeah. I need to take care of me first. And like, it, it comes at a cost yep. sometimes when we, when we say yes to things that are just not going to fit into our lives. And when, yeah. So it's been interesting for me to like unpack that people pleasing and how detrimental it was to me. And that's actually kind of why I had to hit the brakes on my entire business was like, yeah, okay, I need to like stop the ride. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm <laughs> again, something else we have in common. Yeah. I don't know when the list is going to stop, but <laughs> never. It's ADHD. Right? <laughs> we have 25 lists. Here we are. Uh, yeah. If... Minimum. That's on a good day. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. No, I didn't actually write that down. It's all in my brain. No, exactly. Cause who has time to write anything down? We we can remember it all. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. We are on the same page, yeah. girlfriend. Oh my goodness. Oh, good. <sighs> For sure. I love it. So capture the essence of a family and children with moments of authenticity. That's something that you really do well. So what do you, is, do you find that there's a secret ingredient for, to pull that out of them? Or do you sit back and watch and let it happen? How does that evolve for you? I'd say it's a little bit of both. I think sometimes you have to push your clients a little bit more to get what you want out of them. Um, or not even what you want, but what they're going to want out of them. Um, I think it really goes into one preparedness. Um, I Mm -hmm. send a questionnaire out to all my families and I make sure to kind of get a vibe for them uh, beforehand, even like with communication, like I'm already just like, okay, this is the type of person that this is. And I, um, I think my people pleasing (laughs) has allowed me to kind of like almost like form to certain personality types sometimes. So it's just Mm -hmm. like, I can kind of like match vibes really well. Yeah. And I think that that helps, but I'm also, I'm still myself while I'm matching those vibes. Like I'm still, I have a really silly, goofy personality and I'm not afraid to like, kind of like make a fool out of myself. Yeah. Like <laughs> That does not bother me whatsoever. I like, I don't get embarrassed by stuff like that. So, <laughs> but it's just like, if they're more calm and quiet, it's just like, oh, I can pull from that from myself because I am, you know, at heart, a very calm and quiet and chill, like good vibe type of person. But if my, like, if the kids are wild and crazy, you know, it's just like, okay, so I can pull from like, you know, the the little bit of extroversion I have and I can like be a kid with them and like, you know, be silly and, you know, just try to kind of like read the room and know what to bring to the table because I have multiple things. And I feel like, you know, it's like, I don't want to completely change my personality because I don't think that that's <laughs> going to be conducive to making people feel at home and feel comfortable. But I, I do feel like I have a little bag of tricks that I can, you know, totally. match their yeah. vibe. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. It's like you have to chameleon based on yeah. like, of reading and just what's going to work the best. Like what approach do I need to take to this? Are you For an sure. oldest child? I am. <laughs> Is it <Same>. obvious? <laughs> Same girl. You too. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness. Of course you are. Of course we like, are. That's a skill set that we learned. <laughs> it is. It yep. is. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah, being the oldest daughter is a <laughs> it's a it's an interesting um yep. yeah, that birth order thing. I, I swear it's yeah. There there's something there with it. Yeah, it's so funny. How many kids? Um, I have one younger brother. Okay. Yeah. I have two sisters and a brother. 
Okay. Wow, so you're the one. oldest of, of yeah. four? Oh my goodness. Yeah. And my wow. husband's actually the youngest of four. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yep. Yeah. My husband's a middle child. Yeah. And he, he loves to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to for, mention like how forgotten he was. <laughs> he is so loved. Little He's so silly. Love, to, love that. I think that's so funny. Oh my my sister's gosh. like that too. Although yes. I, didn't, I didn't help. I was like, you're adopted. So. Oh my she's, gosh. She's yeah. not. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> Oh my goodness. The things that we tell our siblings. It's so yeah. funny. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> yeah, she's my bestie now. It's all Aww. good. <laughs> That's, I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. So are you ready for our lightning round? Yes. Okay. Um, if you like to cook, what do you like to cook the most? Ooh. Um, I'd like to say Mississippi roast in my crock pot because it's so Ooh. easy. Oh, it's so good. So good. Yum. That and potatoes. Yum. Amaze. Um. What's your favorite movie? Oh, gosh. Um, Eagle versus Shark. It's like an indie movie. I love it so much. Oh, I haven't seen that. <laughs> it's a good one. Um, Go-to song that lifts you up and you're down? Uh, Hang Loose by Alabama Shakes. Oh, I do like Alabama Shakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's put me in a good mood. <laughs> I love that. Um, favorite guilty or not-so-guilty pleasure? Um probably say reality tv mm. <laughs> specifically real housewives and vanderpump rules yeah <laughs> terrible but so fun <laughs> i love it have you watched below deck at all i watched a little bit of it whenever yeah. i was over at my friend's house oh my yeah. goodness yeah, oh, that's, that's that's my guilty pleasure <laughs> that's a, yeah i yeah. need to dive into that one whenever i'm out of vanderpump rules to watch <laughs> There's a new Vanderpump that just came out. It was like Vanderpump yes. Villas. I, I'm going to start watching that one. For sure. And then The Valley. Yeah. The Valley is a different one that I started yeah. watching too. It's just, yeah, that's nonstop. It's... I love it. Just something to have on the background while editing. <laughs> right? either, either that or true crime. It's, <laughs> which isn't, you know, oh, I, I feel it. like have to have one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's something you've accomplished as an adult that your younger self would be proud of? Oh my goodness. Oh. I'm not going to get emotional again. I can't mm -hmm. do that. <laughs> um, I think it's just the fact that I've been through so much and have been able to come out of it stronger. Yeah. And oh my gosh, mm -hmm. Ooh, chill. Um, stronger than I would have ever imagined. Um, just the things that I've gone through as a child and even as an adult. Um, I don't know how. I'm still here and how I am where I am right now. So I think that I totally would have been like, go girl, like you slay queen, yeah. like yeah. for sure. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> love that. What has been the best piece of business advice you've ever been given? Hmm. I think... I feel like probably just like showing up as yourself is mm -hmm. everything, especially like on social media um, and not like shying away from, you know, showing, sharing parts of your life that aren't necessarily photography related because yeah. people care about the person behind, you know, the camera as well as the person taking the pictures. Yeah. Like it's, those are two different people. And I think that um, just being myself and talking about mental health to everyone and <laughs> probably sometimes too much, um, I think really has helped me connect with people in a really authentic and deep way. I love that. And something that I really struggle with is like showing up beyond a photography educator or just a photographer. Like it's just, hard. I really, it's hard. It like, is. I just don't, I'm like, why does anyone care? And I'm Aww. like, I'm, and it's funny because I care. I care so deeply about, I want to yeah. know everything about everybody else. I get so excited to like watch their lives unfold. And yet yeah. I have this opinion that nobody cares about mine. Oh, I care. Right. <laughs> I, I, I want, I want to know everything, especially knowing like we have like so many things in common. Just like, tell me everything in your life, Lisa. I need everything. <laughs> like the random stuff I come home with from like marketplace, like on the daily. Like, yeah. I have a little bit of a marketplace problem. Oh and my I'm not goodness. Call, I'm going to call it a collection. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. It's right. a hobby. <laughs> totally. Oh my goodness. It's like me with Poshmark. It's, but that one's a problem. Yes. <laughs> that one's an actual problem. All the client closet pieces. Ooh. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, what advice would you have for someone that's just starting out in photography? 
I would say no matter what type of photography you do, if it's something, well, one, if you don't even know where you want to go, like shoot everything, like shoot, you know, landscapes, shoot portraits, shoot newborns, shoot wedding, like just try everything until you find what like gives you like that, that feeling of just like, this is where I need to be. Yeah. And once you find it, like go full force and don't give up. Like, mm-hmm. I think that it can be so daunting sometimes, especially on social media, seeing everybody's follower accounts, like fly up and some stay at where they are at. But as long as you're loving what you're doing and your clients are loving what you're giving them, like that's truly the greatest gift of all, like not to get caught up in all the, all the junk on, yeah. <laughs> on social media for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. The vanity metrics, like mm-hmm. it's just like, <laughs> It's everywhere. Yeah. And sometimes it's not people, real. No. And sometimes they're like up you see some and you're like, oh, they bought them. Like that's yeah. not not typically not in photography, but in a lot of mm-hmm. under, other industries you see like with these giant, giant uh, numbers, they, they actually have been purchased. So you're just like For sure. Well, what's you real? Don't know. What's real? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Organic is always the best way. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. A hundred percent. So where can our listeners learn more from you? Oh, goodness. Um, well, I'm on Instagram almost all the time. <laughs> but um, I usually will share about my mentorships in the winter and summer. And I do those exclusively online. So I do like online editing mentorships. And then I offer personalized editing videos where they can send me, you know, five to 10 raw images. And I would show them like how I would approach editing, you know, each image. Yeah. So they can just kind of like, you know, see if anything sparks any inspiration comes from that. I'm not telling them what type of artist to be in any capacity, but I, I try to share what I have and hopefully that helps in some way. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. So can you share what you're going to be teaching for the online family retreat? Yes. Oh my goodness. I am beyond excited. Um, so I am shooting or I shot a storytelling family maternity session um, out in a gorgeous field here in Bakersfield and it was fully styled and it was at sunset and those, the family is just absolutely stunning. Like it was a dream, an absolute dream. Yeah. (laughs) So I love to end my interviews just with this last question and it is, what are you currently curious about or artistically curious about? Oh gosh. I love that. Honestly, everything like I, I, yeah. (laughs) I am so open to learning and I never want to stop learning. I think that can get in our way and be a roadblock as an artist is if you feel like, okay, I've made it. I've hit this like benchmark. I don't need anything else. I don't need any further education, but I'm just like, I want to learn from everybody. I want to know everything. I want all the perspectives. Um, I'm still investing in education now, even though I've been doing this for over 10 years and I, I never want to stop. I feel like once you once you stop, like, so does your growth. So I'm just, I mean, there's, not, there's honestly not one thing I'm like particularly like curious about. It's just like, I just want to know all the things. I love that. Good answer. Same. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. thank you so much for joining me thank today you. oh my gosh this is a blast i could do this every day i know right <laughs> yeah for sure thank you so much for having me oh my beautiful friends i hope you have loved this conversation just as much as i have i'm sending you so much of my light and my love today and every single day we will see you next time